Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing and the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to look at Ruth chapter 3 today. And what we're going to see is Naomi, who is Ruth's mother-in-law. She is going to help Ruth because the practice in the land, we've already talked about it. If a man died, his brother would marry his wife to raise up a child. And that child would be the son of the man who died. It's such a wonderful picture of Jesus Christ because while we were dead in trespasses and sins, Christ is the only one in Christ we're made alive, we're quickened and made alive. But without Jesus Christ, we couldn't do anything. We, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We understand that uh, for in Adam, all die, but in Christ, all shall be made alive. There's only one who was the kinsman redeemer, and that's Jesus Christ. It was important that he came as a man. He came through a line of sinful people. We've seen Rahab the harlot. She had married a man named Solomon, and they had a child named Boaz. Boaz, we're going to find out, marries Ruth. Eventually, they have Obed. Obed has Jesse. Jesse has David. Through the line of David, we see a whole bunch of individuals that come. Through the line of David, we have Mary. All these sinful people that come through, and it gives Christ his humanity. He needed to be born into mankind. He was born as a man, born of a virgin, and that was a prophecy that was fulfilled. And he is the near kinsman, the kinsman redeemer. He's the one who can redeem. And that's just such a wonderful story in Ruth. But here Naomi is helping her with the customs of the land. Uh, Ruth uh, would have no idea about these things unless she had learned them from uh, Elimelech and from Melon and Chilion and uh, Naomi. But Naomi's helping here and she's going to point out uh, what to do as far as Boaz. So let's pick up in Ruth 3. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. If you remember, she stayed with her, and she said, Your God will be my God. Thy God will be my God. She had said she would follow the Lord. She's listening uh, to her mother-in-law. Verse 6, And she went down unto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. Now, I want to point this out. This doesn't say that uh, Boaz was drunken. It says he had eaten and drunk. That would be the past tense. So there's no indication that he had any alcohol. I know a lot of people look for passages to justify alcohol. And again, I'm just going to point this out. If we're supposed to be uh, ready at all times to even answer for the hope that is within us, how can we do that if sometimes we're not sober? That would be very difficult. Somebody calls and asks you to help them out and you're not sober and able to help. We're not very ready at that time. So I would encourage you to rethink that and not look for passages uh, to justify those things. What I've seen in scripture is anytime anyone in the scripture uh, got drunken, no good thing happened. And we can look at some of those uh, over time as we continue to go through the Bible. Verse 8, And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid, and he turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore 
thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Now, there's a picture in this. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, there's a woman named Abigail who she was married to uh, Nabal, and Nabal means fool. And Nabal was one who wouldn't help King David, and David was going to go and uh, he was going to attack Nabal and destroy him because he wasn't uh, good to King David. Well, he wasn't King David yet, but he wasn't good to David. And he uh, ended up being stopped by Abigail, and Abigail uh, gave him uh, food and uh, things for his men. And then uh, what happened is she told Nabal the next day, and in fact, Nabal, he had gotten drunken. And he then, the next morning when she told him this story, he uh, in essence had a heart attack and 10 days later he died. Uh, so there's an instance, of course, where somebody had gotten drunken and something uh, good didn't happen. And all that happened there is he was told that uh, Abigail had helped David. And it upset him so much, he really, his heart uh, just kind of turned to stone within him is, is what it says. You can read about that in First Samuel. And he just, in essence, had a heart attack and then died 10 days later. Well, in 1 Samuel 25, 40, it says, And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, let, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of, the, of my Lord. And um, what we're seeing is a picture here of somebody who is humble coming before the king. To serve the king and we see that in Ruth and Ruth is a Gentile she's coming to a Jewish man we see a picture of a Gentile bride much as the church is the Gentile bride of Jesus Christ because for the most part uh, the church is Jew and Gentile believers anyone who would believe on Jesus Christ in the church age but for the most part it's been the Gentiles now, James 4, 6 says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. There's such a picture in Ruth of coming humbly at the feet of Boaz, and she's asking him to spread uh, the skirt over her to show that he would accept her uh, as his bride. In Ezekiel 16, 8, it talks about uh, Jerusalem. It says, Now, when I passed by thee, and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Jerusalem as an abandoned uh, baby, really here, and cleaned up and adopted by God. There's a picture of Christ in adoption that we see in spreading the skirt. She's going to ask him to spread the skirt over him. Uh, there was nothing inappropriate here in Ruth. She came, laid at his feet. There's no indication of any uh, sexual immorality or anything like that. I want to be clear. It's a picture, a beautiful picture of coming to Jesus Christ kneeling at the feet of Christ, a picture of coming to the feet of the Savior in humility. Verse 10, and he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. There's someone of closer relation, and it was always the closest relation who had the right. His name is never mentioned. Uh, we're going to see in chapter 4 what happens. But Boaz will do what is right. He's going to go to the nearest kinsman, and he's going to see if he'll claim this right. And we'll get to that in chapter 4. Verse 13, tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto thee the part of the kinsman, a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of the kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of the kinsman to thee. As the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before 
one could know another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came unto the floor. He didn't want any appearance of evil. Nothing happened again, uh, but he didn't want the appearance of evil. Verse 15. And that is something that we should have. You know, um, people think there's nothing wrong uh, with living together. You know, couples shouldn't be living together. They shouldn't be uh, having sexual immorality outside of marriage. If you're a young person, I would encourage you uh, to remain a virgin until that time as such as you get married. And you might say, um, but everybody is everybody is caving. Everybody's doing it. Don't believe the lie of Satan. There are people out there who are waiting and there are people uh, who are looking for someone else who has waited for you and you're precious. You're a young person. I would encourage you in that. And uh, Ruth, of course, she had been married before, but uh, there she didn't do anything appropriate here. And there's nothing within the covenant of marriage then. Uh, that is the only relationship, a man, one man and one woman, that the Lord will look at and accept within the covenant of marriage as far as a sexual relationship. And Boaz knows that, and he wants no appearance of evil. I would encourage you to flee from all appearance of evil. Verse 15, and he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. So he gave her a lot of grain here for food. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me, for he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then she said, then said she, sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall, for the man will not rest until he have finished the thing this day. She knew Boaz was a righteous man and he would do it. You know, in Luke 9, 51, it says, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. That was Jesus. He knew his time was nearing the end where he would go to the cross and he set his face toward Jerusalem, meaning he knew his purpose, why he had came, that the Son of Man had come to seek and save that which was lost. And he set his face toward Jerusalem, knowing he had a purpose. First Corinthians fifteen twenty two says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We need that kinsman redeemer. And aren't we glad that Jesus Christ, he wouldn't rest until the matter was settled. And we see a picture of Jesus Christ in Boaz, that he was going to take care of it that day and do what needed to be done for Ruth, because it will be better for Ruth in the long run. If she has a husband, she'll be taken care of. Uh, she'll then have a family. And what a wonderful picture we see, because if we're, if we've accepted Jesus Christ, we have a family. I don't know your family situation, but your family situation may be tough, may be difficult. I would encourage you if you've asked Jesus Christ to save you, that you look, do you have any bitterness in your heart? We don't want to have that bitterness. We talked about that with Naomi calling herself Mara, which means bitterness. Uh, if we've been forgiven, we have that power now in our lives to forgive others. Forgive others if, as you've been forgiven. But then, Let's look to Jesus Christ and remember you're part of the family of God. And wonder what a wonderful thing to be adopted in as children of the living God. And you can rejoice in that. Get in